Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I'd just like to go over the new camera make and model renamer program. This has been completely rewritten from the ground up in order to make it available on the Mac platform. So yes it now works under the Windows and there is also a Mac version available. For those that are not familiar with the program what it basically does, it will allow us to change either the camera make, camera model, the lens or the focal length EXIF data. This is the data which is stored inside of the image. Why would we want to change this information? Well, there are a number of reasons why this information may want to be changed. We may have a preset which is not compatible with our camera. We may be trying to import an image into a RAW converter, again, which may not be compatible with our camera. For me, I use this when I'm scanning black and white negatives. If we look at these two images, both of these have been scanned with an Epson V800. And if we look at the EXIF data, we can see that next to the device make, it's showing the name of the scanner, Epson. Next to the model, it's showing the model number of the scanner, Epson Perfection V800. So some people might be saying, well, I can live with that, that's not a big deal. But for my workflow, I like to show which camera I actually made these photographs with. And the reason for that is because I use Adobe Lightroom to catalogue all my images, whether digital or film scans. And one of the features inside of Lightroom, which I like to use, is the ability to display all the photographs taken with a particular camera. Now, if I was to leave this as the default like Epson V800, I don't know at a glance which camera I actually made that photograph with. So I need to change that information in order for the cataloging to be synchronized. So that's how I use it. And I really think the program does an excellent job at renaming this information, which otherwise used to be quite difficult using command line tools. Let's demonstrate how to actually change this information with this program. So we've got the program on the right. This is the Mac version, the new version. And the first thing that I want to show you is one of the new additions. We've now got a dark mode. People have asked for the dark mode. So if we change this button, we can then toggle between the dark mode or the light mode. So that was one thing that people have asked for. Let's go ahead and change the EXIF data in these images. To start, I'm going to choose Browse, and it's going to ask me to find the folder where the images are. So they are under Scanner Tests, and I'm going to click Open. So we can now see the path to the location of the files. If I had subdirectories, we could select this and it would then include any images. So that's like a batch process. That's really powerful because if, if I had a batch of scans, I could just let the program do it automatically. I've only got the one folder, so I'm going to leave that disabled. Then it wants to know what file type to look for. And we've got a selection of file types we can choose. I've scanned these with a TIFF, so I can leave everything disabled or enabled. I'm just going to disable the ones I don't need. And now for the crucial part. I want to change the camera make. So yes, I need that enabled. And the camera in this particular case was a Pentax. I want to include the model number. So I'm going to put Pentax. And it was a spot matic. I can, if I want, 
change the lens information and also the focal length. I'm going to leave them disabled. Now we need to know, do we want to back up the files? We've got two choices. We can create a backup or we can overwrite the originals. To demonstrate, I'll select create backups. And then the final thing we need to tell it to do is what to do if it finds an error. And again, we've got two choices. We can stop processing any remaining files or we can continue processing remaining files. So if, if it finds an error, I'm going to tell it just to continue. If I want to do a dry run, I'll leave this checkbox enabled. So what a dry run would do, it would run through the entire process, but it would not rename any files. It's just giving you a dry run just to show you what it would do in the job summary. I'm going to take the tick out of that box because I'm going to do a live run. Everything is set, so all that's left to do is press start. It goes through, it does its thing, and then it creates a job summary. So this is the job summary. It tells us what folders have been processed and failed and what files have been processed and failed. Because we chose backup, if we look on the finder window, we'll actually see a new folder which has been created. And inside this folder, we can see the original files and it's just amended the file name with underscore originals. So these are the originals that have not been touched. They have been backed up. So this is what happens if you tell it to back your originals up. So going back to what it's actually changed, let's look at this image. We can now see that under the device make, it has changed it to Pentax. And the device model is Pentax Spotmatic. And the same should be true for that one. So that's how quick it was. It is extremely fast at doing this conversion. So coming back to the program, that's the job summary. We can press OK. It shows us a log of what's actually happened. It tells us where the folder was. It gives us a list of all the parameters that we set. And it basically just tells us what has been happening. If we want to save this log file, we can press the Save Log option, and that will save it out as a text file. To go back to where we've just come from, we would choose Options, and it remembers the settings. If we want to reset these back to the program default, we would choose to press reset options. We've talked about the dark mode and the light mode. Under the about option, we've got choices whether we want to go to the website, submit a product support ticket if you're having issues, and we've got a check for updates option. So pressing this will check for any program updates. And we have the option, which is selectable or non-selectable, whether to check for new updates automatically. So if you leave these checked, what will happen is when you start the program next time, it will check to see if there's an update available and it will ask you to go and download it. The view change log option will show you a list of what has changed across each new release. And that's just a quick rundown on the new camera make and model renamer program. It's very intuitive. There are no bells and whistles. It is very simple to use, but yet it's a very powerful tool. If you find yourself in a position where you need to change either the camera make, camera model, lens or the focal length EXIF data. The product is now available in two versions, either for the Mac or Windows, and I will leave a link 
to where the program can be gained from in the description below. So many thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video on the new camera make and model renamer. Until next time, as always, bye for now.